Today, we're designing and 3D printing a simple geometric planter. To design this project, we'll be using a program called Rhinoceros and start by drawing a line and using the array command to duplicate it around a circle. I create 36 lines, which are each at 10 degree angles. I snap the center point of a circle to the middle of all the lines and create one with a 6 inch diameter. These red lines will be guides for designing this geometric planter. With the guides drawn, I lock the layer and use a new layer to design the planter. I start by connecting all of the intersecting points of the circle and the lines to create a polygon. Using the line command, I trace one segment from one point to another and move it into an empty area. I switch to the front view and begin designing the triangular geometry that will be duplicated to create the exterior of the planter. In the front view, I copy the line down 6 inches for the total height and up 2 inches for the area that will be slightly larger in diameter. I draw lines connecting the end points of the short lines with the center of the others. Then, I delete the small line closer to the bottom so that the resulting shape looks like an X connecting the end points of the shorter lines. I go back to the top view and copy all of the lines over an eighth of an inch to give depth to the geometry. When we're done, it'll look like a faceted gem. Using the reference line layer with red lines, I connect specific points that represent the edges of the surface. The points I use are the corners at the perimeter of one layer and the intersection of the lines at the bottom of the second layer. Now, I copy over all the lines that I'll use as a guide to form the surfaces of the 3D shape. I select three lines that'll form one triangle of the facet and use the edge surface command to form a plane. I repeat this with the remaining lines until all the surfaces are created and join them together. Next, I copy over the geometry to the polygon that we drew and use the array command to duplicate it around a circle at 10 degrees to create the perimeter of the planter. I copy one reference line 6 inches to use as a guide for reshaping the planter. I also extrude the polygon to a thin object, move it down 6 inches, and use the boolean union command to join it with the surfaces. With the rough form of the planter complete, it's time to mold it into a sleeker form. To do this, I select the entire object and use the taper command to reduce the size of the top of the planter. Then, I copy the reference line up 2 inches for the area that should be wider and use the taper command to pull the bottom of the planter inwards. I continue refining the shape by using the taper command. To finish the modeling process, I design a drip tray with raised areas to hold the planter off of the surface. This will let the excess water drain out of the bottom of the planter. I've shown this part of my process in other videos on my channel, so I won't get into it here. And this is how the 3D model turned out. The last step before 3D printing the planter was to import it into a slicing software. Since I own a Prusa 3D printer, I use their slicing software which is simple to use. After exporting the G-code for both objects, I import it into my SD card, insert it into my 3D printer, and start the printing process. Since the total print time for the planter was 8 hours and the drip tray was 1 hour, I decided to start with the drip tray. Each time I design and print a drip tray, I incorporate the lessons I've learned from previous ones like having a taller edge to stop water from overflowing and making the spacers wider. Once the drip tray was complete, I started printing the geometric planter. I checked on it a few times throughout the 8 hour print and it was fun to watch the 3D printer creating the facets around the perimeter of the curved planter. You could also see some light passing through the inverted pattern on the inside of the planter. Once the print was complete, I removed it from my 3D printer and brought it over to my work table. I brought over my planting soil and transferred it into the planter. Then I brought over my plant and transferred it into the soil.
With that, this geometric planter is complete. A simple and elegant planter that fits in any setting. If you enjoyed this video, you should check out my other 3D printed products playlist and consider subscribing. I look forward to seeing you again next week.